Welcome to the People Leaders Podcast, the audio resource for managers and business leaders creating high-performing teams. Join leadership and team development experts Jan and Michelle Turkelson each week as they explore both subjects from every angle. Through practical tips, valuable insights, and compelling interviews with leadership experts around the world, you'll learn how to bring out the best in your staff and how to give your best as a leader. Okay. Hello, Michelle. Oh, hi, Jan. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good and I'm cold. It's cold yeah, here right. at the moment, but yeah. it's an opportunity to, to rug up and, you know, get your winter woolies out. Um, so this podcast is a little bit different to what we've been doing and it really is um, an opportunity to give a resource back to our, you know, our listeners, especially who are going through, um, you know, the, the change in the way in which we work. Um, and we have created a COVID transition plan and we're going to step people through what that is and how they would use it. That's right. So Michelle, do you want to just give some context? Yeah. So when we talked about uh, moving through change and the, the change process, there were three key areas that managers and leaders can support their teams with at the very beginning when there's high anxiety. The best thing that you can do is listen and, and give people a safe space. Then as they move through the um, transition, it is about support and information. As you're coming up out of that curve and people are somewhat getting used to the idea that things are very, very different. What they're expecting is a plan. Tell me what the future looks like. Engage me in the process. And that's exactly what we have done in developing the um, the COVID transition plan. So the good thing about this COVID transition plan is that we've created a whole package to go with that. But what we're giving away is, is the template that um, people can use in their teams to capture the key areas that they want to incorporate as they move into transitioning into a new way of working. Now, in our package that we've got, our COVID transition plan, we have four key process questions. And at the end, once you've answered these um, process questions in relation to the key areas that determine a high-performing team, then you come out with some very on-target strategies. And it's these strategies that go into the COVID transition plan template. And with the COVID transition plan, you know, we have put together a really comprehensive package. So we take people through all the areas of a high-performing team, like you mentioned, Michelle, as well as team protocols, safety, because where and when people perform their task is going to be very important now because it's going to be different Mm. than what it was. We also look at tools and technology. So we really step through all those key areas. And as a team, you might find that you, you nominate three to five key areas that you want to actually build the plan around. So it really does depend on where you are as a team and how comprehensive you want this plan to be. So, Jan, if we were to um, be generous with our content, what, you know, what are, you know, the four or five key areas? One of the first things we would always say is what's the purpose of this team? You know, what is the goal of this team in terms of what they have to produce or develop or write? And then the other thing is something around goals, goals and roles for each person within the team. Then we've got processes, where and when, as you were saying, is a new dimension and safety. There are a couple of areas that you can build your COVID transition plan around. Yeah. And one of the other elements is relationships. Yeah. The quality of the relationships that you're having, not only within your team, but what we're actually finding in organisations that um, teams are becoming less um, insular and a lot more collaborative. They're reaching out to different colleagues that perhaps they might bump into in the organisation. Now they're actually reaching out to them. That's right. Yeah, there's a more there's a consciousness around that too. And what we're hearing is that they're becoming less hierarchical mm. because there there seems to be greater access. <laughs> yeah, to senior leaders. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And and what I find interesting, Michelle, is that a lot of people who are very focused on task now realize the importance and 
the benefit of focusing on the relationships and the people. Oh, top tip, Jan. So when we um, interviewed a, a number of leaders that we're working with that have, you know, that are going through this process, the ones that had the less bumpy transition are the ones who spent a lot of time in the early phases making people feel safe and listened to and developing the relationship side of things, checking in on a regular basis and, you know, at, from the very from the get-go, identifying with their team, so how are we going to do this team? What are some principles that can set us up for success? And you know what? It worked. Like mm. We always intuitively knew and have seen it outside of turbulent times, but in turbulent times, Times, that process worked a treat. It was great to see. Because what you're doing is you're setting up a level of certainty around yeah. how we are going to operate and communicate. And there's a, there's a certain sense of calmness that happens when you know that there's a little bit of a process and a rhythm to the yeah. way in which you're going to interact and perform. Um, the, the other thing that we're also seeing is that a lot of leaders are really taking on their shoulders the importance of well-being for their team. So they're really checking in on their, the well-being, not just about the task. Um, however, what we have found is that there are a lot of leaders that aren't um, drinking from their own cup. You know, so they are not really taking care of their own well-being. So if you are one of those leaders and listening to this podcast, it is not sustainable to keep on um, working, meeting after meeting, not getting out, walking around, you know, having some mental ease throughout your day um, because you will not be able to perform at the level that you actually need to for yourself, your family and your team. Oh, so, so, so true. Okay, so let's take people through this COVID transition plan. And if we can imagine a series of columns going across the page, and we'll take people through uh, some suggestions on how they might start. Now, where we do start is with a set of key transition principles. Now, this is these are just like the foundational pieces, really. And it's the, you know, what's going to be our attitude or our, our mindset as we transition to post-COVID. And these key transition principles are things that the, all the team will and can agree to in terms of how they're going to behave and interact with one another as they transition to a new way of working. So, so let's give people some examples of some um, key transition principles. And, you know, like one that keeps coming up is that um, we always feel safe. That totally. And... And maybe that's the word that you use. Yep. It could be that um, uh, we take care of each other. So it could be a number of principles around um, safety. And it's not just your physical safety. It could be your mental and emotional safety as yeah, well. Yeah, and, and there are things like, you know, we're going to support and invest in each other's well-being. For example, you were mentioning well-being um, before. Uh, the other one is that, you know, we are going to uh, reach out to one another on a regular basis to check in. You know, it's little things like that that you can incorporate. It's going to be a team-by-team thing in terms of you know what you're going to include the other thing is that we're finding a lot of teams want to have fun they're going to consciously build in opportunities um, for fun and play as they transition yeah. and you know they're going to you know uh, critique and refine key core processes as they transition. So little things like that, you can start to build in. I, Jen, we'd recommend no more than about seven principles, yeah? No. Yeah, and the principles are really an opportunity to set up a criteria about the way in which you want to be. Yeah. So what do you want to be as a team? Who do you yeah. want to be as a team? Yeah. And the invitation is to be better than what you were before. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And, and you can do that by being clear and having those conversations because really that is the work as well, isn't it? So that's the first column. So, you know, that's a meaty conversation in and of itself as far as, you know, if you're going to, to do that in a, a team setting. And 
So how you would do that perhaps is to give people the context and then have a discussion and then start to capture what those key principles are. And some of the questions could be is, you know, like um, how do we want to be? You know, what does good look like or what does bad look like? What is it that we don't want to be? And then you flip it. So there are a number of ways in which you could do that. Mm. Right. So the second column running across is the goal or the target or the objective. So the first column was really about um, who you need to be as a team. And the next is the what, is what is it that you want to be able to um, complete, have done. And so in this column, you have your target or your objective, and then you have an actual um, a by when. Yeah, so these are strategies. So these are either strategies or goals or targets that will help you come out of or to help you transition through uh, COVID and come out in a much better um, in a much better place as a team, in terms of what you do, how you do it, and when you do it. So what are the the key things now? Obviously, in our package, we have a set of questions that lead very clearly to what the objective could or should be. But what is your objective, for example, around safety? What is your objective around, um, you know... Technology, technology or the tools technology. that you want to use. So, yeah. for example, there are some teams who have a clear target yeah. that um, in a month's time, so they put a date on it, that every team member would know how to run a team meeting use a collaborative, using a collaborative whiteboard. Yeah. So that they have, and they don't have to be big lofty goals, but there are goals and objectives that you know are going to move your team through this transition. That's right. And, and that's exactly what this is for. This is your COVID transition um, uh, plan or template to help you move through and be in a much better space because every, every team, every leader, every person that we've spoken to has grown through this. <laughs> yeah. So when you do come up with your goals or target, you might come up with quite a number of them mm. and then you just have a priority for yep. them. And once you can... Uh, create a priority, then you know, you know, what your next most logical step is going to be. So running across the right hand side again, so we've got the key transition principles, then the next column was your goal or objective. And then the next column is accountability. So who is actually accountable for this particular goal of uh, target or objective. Now, we've talked a little bit about accountability and responsibility, um, and accountability is really where the buck stops, and the responsible person is who is actually going to do that particular um, objective or work on that target. Now, because this is a team plan, you might have several people who are accountable for a particular um, goal or objective, or you could have the whole team who's accountable. Um, so there are a number of ways in which you can do that. Yeah, and I love that, Jen, because so often people, you know, we've got into the mindset over the last decade, actually, that, um, the you know, you only have to have one person accountable. Uh, and as soon as you have two or three people accountable, then you split, you know, the... Um, you know, the desire to get it done because, you know, somebody else will do it. But I love the idea of being absolutely in lockstep with a, a couple of other people and being accountable to each other to achieve a goal. So I, I really like that idea of, um, of sharing the accountability. Then on the next column on the right-hand side, we've got the critical success factors. And really that's what has to go right. That's right. What is the most important thing in order for you to achieve this target or goal in order for it to be successful? And then moving over to the next column. So we've had what has to go right. And then what are the potential barriers? So what are the things that could really bring this goal target or activity unstuck? Is it a technology issue? Is it a stakeholder issue? So yeah. Is it a resource? Is it um, money, budget, there are yep. a number of things. Yep. So, so, And it's really important to have the conversations about, so what could go wrong? Yeah. Because then you're starting to pre-pave 
opportunities when you actually have those conversations. That's right. And then you can mitigate those potential barriers through your actions, which is the next column over. So what are the steps that we need to, um, to put in place in order for us to achieve that goal that we identified, right? Is there something, is there an action step that we need to put in place in order to make sure that our critical success factor goes well? Do we have to put an action in place to ensure that the, the potential bar uh, barrier is mitigated? And what are the first three steps in order for us to achieve that goal or target? Exactly. And we would say normally three to five steps, you know, and what is the next most logical step? Because a lot of people, you know, like once you have a goal or objective, it's like, so what do I really need to do now? Mm -hmm. And when you can talk through that as a team, you're getting clarity around um, expectations, but also what are the minimum standards that are, that are required for the team to move forward as well. And so the last column is um, measures of success. So how do we know that we are going to be successful once we hit this target? That's right. So is it, is it a number? Is it a qualitative measure of success? Is it that everybody in the team, um, you know, agrees that we have, you know, been successful? You know, it, don't feel as though it always has to be a number. It can be a yes or a no answer. You just need to agree the measures. So for, yeah, so for example, a measure of success could be, you know, taken the, um, the previous goal was, you know, every team member has an opportunity to, to be proficient or capable of using the collaborative whiteboard. A measure of success could be that every team member now shares responsibility moving forward of running a team meeting using a collaborative whiteboard. So that's a measure of success because you're building the capability of the team. Yeah. And the other question to ask there in terms of measure of success, it's like, so going back to our goal, if we were achieving that goal, what sort of things would we be seeing? And that will lead you into answering that question, which is, you know, how will we measure our success? What will be the criteria that will determine that we've achieved that goal or target? Yeah. Now, if you're listening to this podcast, you know, some of the questions that we pose to you are going to be very key if um, you are going to run this by yourself because mm -hmm. I think the quality of the questions that you ask will help um, focus the team on what the outcome is. So we've just stepped you through page one of the COVID transition plan. And then page two, what we have is we've got four columns and you can just print out as many um, pages of this as you want, depending on how many objectives. And so you've got an objective, you've got a week one, and then following on week two, three, and four. And within that column, you've got the objective, the person accountable, person responsible, and you've got space to write what the objective is and a little bit more detail. And um, when, and it actually looks like that once you have this written down, it's very solid, you know, like you've gone from, you know, thinking about it to actually making it tangible. And it looks good too. Um, you know, our designers have done a great job putting this plan um, together and make it look good because, you know, ideally, can you imagine everyone in a team having that up on their, um, on their wall or so they can actually see it? Because right. we know as human beings, when we actually look at something, then we're engaging with it and our mind is going to be focused on it. Yep. So that's the invitation. Is there anything else that you wanted to share, Michelle, with our COVID transition plan template? Well, I think just start, like have a listen to the podcast, have a talk to your team and, um, and start thinking about the future. What does, you know, what do we want our future to, to look like? And there's no better way than planning for it. <laughs> that, that's right. And even though, you know, we've, all, we've talked a lot about, you know, whose plan has ever worked out 100%. Yeah. No, <laughs> you know what I mean? However, what it does, it actually creates a criteria and a focus for the team to move forward. Yeah. So print out the, um, the template, have a listen to the podcast, and then if you would like to engage us, we can actually step you through a whole uh, COVID planning session where we have a workbook, the series, we've got the presentation packs, we've got everything for you. And if you wanted to find out more information on that, you can go to our uh, website and um, 
in our resource section, there will be something on the COVID. Oh, I think we've called it lock in the learnings because locking in the, the learnings is going to help you kind of like transition as well. So there we have it. Yeah, good luck Start. everyone. Let yeah, us know how you go. You've been listening to the People Leaders Podcast with Michelle and Jan Turkelson. For show notes and other free resources, please visit us at peopleleaderspodcast.com. Do you know someone else who could benefit from cutting-edge leadership and management techniques? Please take a moment to share this and other episodes via your podcast app, email, or social media channels. Each share helps us fulfill our goals of reducing workplace stress and increasing job satisfaction for leaders, managers, and their teams worldwide. The People Leaders Podcast is brought to you by the Experts On Air Podcast Network.